can you tell us uh, what the writing process was with filtered sensors? Well, this was a bit remote because uh, Mike's lived in London for the last five oh, years, right. okay. which was part of the reason for the slowdown. Sure. And then I was living in New York for eight months last year, so we started off by swapping a lot of files over about 18 months, awesome. sort of sporadically, and then we got quite sort of did it faster swapping for about three months and then I went to London and we knocked it off in two weeks. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. yeah we had about 10 tracks that were in varying uh, parts of development and it became pretty evident that actually being in the same room together was going to be actually quite good and finishing an album remotely just wasn't going to work. Right, right, of course. And so yeah, we just yeah did set up in a loft in London and just smashed it out in, um, Beautiful. in two weeks. And it was a really fun process and just trying to turn 3 p.m. in the afternoon with the sun pulling down the blinds and pretending it's 4 a.m. in a nightclub <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm nice. um, trying to get in the zone and then doing like a 15 minute live jam and then editing that town into a song and oh, cool. yeah, it was a really really enjoyable process. And this is the 20th anniversary of Pitch Black, yeah. what major changes have you seen in New Zealand EDM movement? I, well, when we first started, everyone was pulling their studios to pieces, taking them to festivals and playing live music. And then CDR came in sure. and people went, oh, actually, why am I doing all this? I'm just going to go and burn my stuff to CD and I'm going to play. And so the the sort of bottom fell out of the live electronic right. stuff, yes. um, which obviously we didn't do. But um, And then what's cool now is it's come almost full circle sure. and you can just rock out with your laptop and with Ableton and you can either do a full performance or you can play multi-track or Beautiful. and I, I think that the, the live side of it and partly possibly because record sales of you know you don't make your, um, anything off your of your actual sales of music now sure the live thing is, has become the uh, predominant way that you earn your money yes absolutely and so I just think and, and artists are realizing they have to be live they have to talk to a VJ they have to get a show and they yes. have to start producing something and I think it's it's almost like in 20 years it's come right back to where it was right we are at, now have full live electronic music in a, on a massive scale awesome now what's exciting you guys musically at the moment uh, really what, what Mike was referring to before just seeing live acts doing it in different right, ways sure. you know like you know controllers you know you can buy a decent little MIDI controller for a hundred two hundred bucks these days right, and sure. the way that people just you know and that with a laptop and say Ableton people's just how they approach it it's fascinating the way everybody approaches it differently sure. and yeah you know when it's you know, loud enough to feel and big and and uh, yeah I'm sure he's enjoying it yeah yeah yeah, yeah work it yeah, I mean, for me, I'm living in London. It's just the sheer range of music that you can Absolutely. go out to. Um, and after being there for five years, I've, I've managed to sniff out real underground stuff. Are there any other things that you've got planned for 2017? Got a remix album coming yeah, out. Yeah, we've got so the the every year. every album we've done is there's remixes. So we've already released four singles, I think, with remixes off cool. the last album. Wicked. And then the, in July, there's a there's a like a curated remix album. Well, thanks guys for coming on Push Play Music TV. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you for having us. I'm Mike. And I'm Paddy. And remember to push play and play push.